Welcome to Looking at Legal Stuff. Today we have eight hearings with a high-conflict couple where mom has been withholding the children from dad and had him arrested for attempting to take them back home, despite not having a parenting plan in place. They both accuse the other of everything under the sun, including drug abuse, criminally dangerous partners, reckless behavior, as well as nearly every other kind of abuse you can think of. But who's telling the truth? Let's see what the judge thinks. Christopher Crocker and Cheyenne Acevedo. <clears throat> that matter, sure. Your Honor. Um, currently, I'm not representing Christopher Crocker. And I see Ms. Acevedo. Aye. All right, Mr. Anagnostu. Uh, yes, this is my client's uh, motion. Uh, my client filed a petition uh, to establish a uh, parenting plan uh, with Ms. Acevedo. Um, and um, uh, prior to that, uh, the two children, uh, we're talking about Samuel, who's three, and uh, Calliope, who's only 11 months at this point, primarily lived with my client. Uh, they had always lived with my client um, uh, in his home. He has a, a large four-bedroom home. They uh, have all their things there, their personal property there. They live there. Miss Acevedo would come there to see the children, uh, be there for a period of time. Then she would leave. There was a, actually, there was a period of time that she was out of the residence uh, from October 22nd to February 23rd with little contact with the children. Then she showed up again. She's a bartender by trade. So uh, she'd be there maybe a couple of days during the week. And then she'd be gone for most weekends and um, you know, not very much caring for the children, but she then took the children. Uh, my client attempted to get them back. Uh, ultimately, there were um, uh, issues and, and she called the police and, and my client got uh, charged. Uh, anyway, those have been since dismissed, but um, he hasn't been able to see his children. Uh, he, and um, so uh, we're asking that the children be returned to my client. Uh, they need to be uh, return to my client to their home where they've uh, been raised. Uh, and then we um, set a visitation uh, schedule for Ms. Acevedo. We got to be concerned because she has a relationship uh, with a, a sex offender. Uh, this, um, and we provided the, the uh, criminal sheet regarding um, uh, Gary Hayden, uh, who has a, a rape of a child and a third degree conviction. Um, and my client, I mean, that's what precipitated this. My client went to get the children um, and um, uh, get them returned to their home. Uh, and then um, she's refused since then. And without order, she attempted to get an emergency order uh, from the court here that was denied and it was set up for this hearing. So uh, we're asking today that the children be returned. And if the court, uh, you know, is going to consider some uh, a residential space, uh, schedule at this point, uh, it'd be, you know, after a full drug assessment evaluation on Miss Acevedo uh, and some kind of orders in place that uh, the children will not be around um, Mr. Hayden. Uh, those are our requests. Uh, the, the parties had previously talked and they were, they were working on a a split visitation arrangement of three, four, three days with one, four with the next, and then four, three. So it would be a split schedule, uh, but it would uh, rotate during the week because of uh, Miss Acevedo's work schedule, uh, being a bartender most weekends and stuff. Um, I guess the court can consider uh, that, but I think it should follow some kind of full evaluation on Miss Acevedo and and uh, drug and alcohol assessment. And she has, as indicated in my client's declaration, some uh, bipolar issues uh, that are not being treated. She's not gotten into recommended counseling uh, and there are significant issues and concerns. Uh, the children need to be returned and then we need to start a process of uh, what's gonna be in their, in their best interest moving forward so that they're protected. Ms. Acevedo, what do you wish to say? Hi, Your Honor. Um, 
couple things. I'm not in a relationship with the man in question. I went on a date with him a couple times at the beginning of the year, learned his name was not what he told me it was. I'm also not in a relationship with him. Currently, Hayden Hess is in custody in the Cowlitz County Jail for uh, some stuff that does not involve me whatsoever. Um, I am not homeless. I'm not on drugs. I live in my dad's house. I lived in Chris's house until December 26th of 2022, which Chris and I agreed upon when I broke up with him in October due to the unhealthy nature of the relationship that we had with one another. I stayed in the house through the holidays. I have thousands of photos of all four of us together through these months. He claims that I was missing. Um, I moved into my dad's house. I've lived there ever since. I do not bartend anymore. I'm right now full stay at home mom. I'm more than happy to comply with any drug testing question because I have not done any substances. The reason why Christopher and I are having these problems is because three times this year, I have caught him doing fentanyl oxys and he went to Rainier Springs down in Vancouver twice to detox and did one at home detox. He admitted all of this to me. I have a recording of a video on my phone of him talking to his mother about his drug use and her instructing him not to text me the messages, only to do Madam it over because it could Here's or, Yeah, Ma'am, we need to limit ourselves to what's in the affidavits that have already been presented. I have no drug use. I have a home. I have a car. I'm not working currently because I'm focusing on the children and I have the means to do that without work at the moment. I'm not using drugs. The reason why I've been keeping the children from Christopher was his drug use. Three times this year, he has been smoking drugs off of tinfoil in the house where the children are. That's how I caught him the first time as I found the tinfoil. He went to detox. He came out said he was clean. Realistically, he later admitted he got into his vehicle and used immediately after getting out of the detox. He did an at-home mm -hmm. detox where his mom babysat him. You're and then I went to pick up the children on August 13th and he admitted okay, he had just, done it. Just a moment, ma'am. Mr. Anagnostu. Uh, this is not contained in any kind of declaration uh, before uh, the court. Yeah, there were some references to it all. Uh, go ahead, ma'am. I, I'm not using drugs. I'm not a danger to the children. I am not in the relationship he claims that I'm in. All, his accusations towards me are false. And his declarations, all of his parents and friends claiming to have seen me use drugs, they're all lies That because I know I haven't. I am more than willing to drug test because I've been clean and sober for many years. I haven't done any illegal drugs whatsoever. All right, Mr. Andy Nelson. Uh, just briefly, Your Honor, uh, the children resided primarily uh, with my client. Uh, he hasn't got to see them, uh, uh, you know, because of uh, Ms. Acevedo's actions. And uh, this needs to be resolved uh, for the children's benefit. They need to be returned to their home. The children lived with yeah. Mr. Crocker. All right. Uh the children will be uh, transferred to Mr. Crocker. Your Honor, please. Ma you need to listen to me at this point. If you don't, it's going to cost you money or other things. So the children are going to be returned to Mr. Crocker at 5 p.m. tomorrow. They will then be returned to Ms. Acevedo at 5 p.m. on Tuesday. We're going to review this next week on this same calendar. Both parties are to do a urinalysis and hair test immediately, uh, and we will see what those results are next week. If either side doesn't do the test and have results next week, the test will be presumed positive and we will go from there. I have one more question, Your Honor. What's your question? Uh, Mr. Crocker currently has a case open involving ch the children and recklessly endangering our son's life. It's an active case and it doesn't resolve until October 18th. Uh, he's uh, got two charges uh, for reckless endangerment pending against him and uh, false information to a police officer and obstruction. And our son was involved in that matter. He was driving at 80 miles per hour and at 35 with our son unbuckled in the back seat. And I, right, well, I suggest you file copies of that report so I can review it for next week. 
the children are to have no contact with Mr. Hess. And you should have copies of that report. Ma'am, I do not. All right. So the kids are to have no contact with Mr. Hess. Everybody is to behave perfectly appropriately. And we will review this next Thursday, the 12th, at the same time. Your Honor, Amy Powers for the state. Can we address child support next Thursday as well? We filed our proposed child support worksheets on September 22nd and sent them to both parties. That's appropriate. And we'll also address getting a GAL next week as well. Thank but you. I want, the, I want to make sure both parties understand that they are to do those uh, drug tests immediately. If I don't have them next Thursday, I'm going to assume that whoever didn't provide them is using. That's the only option I've got. Yes, Your Honor. You understand that, ma'am? Yes. All right. That will be all. Uh, Your Honor, just clarification. So my client gets them, uh, the children tomorrow at 5 p.m. and returns them at 5 p.m. on next Tuesday. Yes, sir. Um, the exchanges, uh, we, we would like to use a third party to do the exchange, either her father or my client's father. Any objection to that, ma'am? My father will be doing it, yes. All right. That will be all. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Christopher Crocker and Cheyenne Acevedo. Here, Your Honor. I'm not ready, Your Honor. This is a matter that you set over a week uh, from last week uh, for uh, the parties to uh, complete uh, drug testing. Uh, the parties have done that. My uh, both parties uh, filed results yesterday. Did you get those, Your Honor? Uh, yeah. Uh, one preliminary matter: Miss Acevedo had filed a notice of disqualification after the hearing last week. I've stricken that because I've already made discretionary rulings. I did see the uh, test results for both parties. Both sides were clean. Congratulations, Your Honor. I'm happy to hear that. Yes, sir. Uh, for the record, Stephen Swenson for the respondent, Cheyenne Acevedo. Can I speak on the drug test really quickly after you're done? You're certainly going to have that opportunity. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, Your Honor, uh, this is a case where, you know, my client primarily had uh, the two children um, and then uh, Miss Acevedo uh, took them and wouldn't return them. Uh, he went to pick them up. Uh, and um, uh, criminal charges uh, ensued. She, uh, you know, was prevented him uh, or was attempting to prevent him from picking up his children. Anyway, that's a that's a mess. In, in the interim, uh, you said that he would get, uh, uh, I think it was from Friday to Tuesday uh, of uh, last week. Um, he had the children. He, he was raising the children. You see that in the declarations. They primarily lived at his residence. Uh, so going forward, you know, we would like the children return to my client and set up some uh, standard visitation with Miss Acevedo. Uh, uh, and the alternative, they had, it, it's in the record, it's in his declaration and stuff, they were trying to work out a split custody arrangement. Um, so, I mean, if, if your honor wants to go on the, that uh, until we can, uh, you know, go forward and get it further information and litigation uh, regarding what's the best interest. I assume the court's going to want to appoint a guardian ad litem for these children uh, to figure out their uh, best interest. But uh, at this time, our request is the children be returned to my client uh, in the alternative uh, that at least we do the, the, and it was a split arrangement that they had agreed to. Uh, so one party had three days, the other one had four and then the other party would get three days and it would uh, vice versa, uh, back and forth uh, for on a two week period. They would in, each end up with seven days. So um, that's our request at this time, uh, returning the children to my client and setting up some standard residential time with Ms. Acevedo or, or uh, adopting their what they were working on as a as an agreed parenting plan of appointing a guardian ad litem so we can go forward on this matter. Mr. Clinton. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I believe I already stated my appearance for the record, but I'll do it again just in case. Steven Swenson for the respondent. Um, my client disputes that Mr. Crocker had primary custody. When she moved out in December, she took the children with her and he would get weekend visits. 
Um, also, Mr. Crocker has been um, dealing with fentanyl addiction. The drug tests, if you look at them, my clients, because she was accused of basically taking every drug under the sun, did a full 17 panel test and full test. If you look at Mr. Crocker's test, he didn't get tested for fentanyl. It won't show up on those tests. So basically those tests are useless. Um, I also see he recently got a haircut since last week. Um, I believe he's trying to evade getting actually tested for fentanyl. Um, we can submit more evidence. We have a recording that he recorded where he admits that he was taking fentanyl. Um, I believe we can get the rehab records. Um, we can subpoena them because um, he was in rehab for fentanyl use in August, according to my client. Um, and if you saw the police reports, um, which we submitted, um, he grabbed one of the children, got in the truck with the child unsecured and was going 60 to 80 in a 35 zone with my client in the back of his bed, bed of his truck and was eluding police. Um, we have serious concerns about his addiction issues and about his um, decision making and my client has been the primary caretaker since December 26th. Mr. Ignacio? Uh, yes, Your, Your Honor, we, we dispute that, um, uh, the, the facts, uh, and there's a criminal uh, case pending. Uh, it does not include the children. Um, uh, he was trying to, uh, there was no endangerment of the, of the children. He wanted to, to pick up his children, Ms. Acevedo, you know, recklessly jumped in the back of his truck when he was trying to leave. But anyway, that's that's not uh, before you. What's before you is uh, the residential plan. With regards to the drug testing, fentanyl is an opiate. Uh, it's the major opiate. Uh, and his drug test uh, in, included testing for, uh, you know, standard drug testing for opiates. Uh, and it was negative. But if they want additional testing, uh, my client will submit to additional testing. Also, uh, you know, my client tells me they did not take hair from his head. Uh, they took it from his armpit. So um, uh, that's what, you know, the, this, his hair is exactly like it was last week. Uh, you know, you saw him last week. Uh, uh, he hasn't done anything to it, but in any event, it doesn't matter. They, they take it from other parts of your body. Um, and he submitted to the drug testing. He'll submit to additional ones that they want if they want to pay for it. Uh, but he got tested for opiates and it was negative. All right. Well, first of all, my understanding of the hair test is that uh, fentanyl would appear on an opiate test uh, if that is incorrect. Uh, and uh, Ms. Acevedo wishes to pay for it. Certainly she can have Mr. Crocker tested for specifically for fentanyl. Uh, counsel, what are each of your client's work schedules, if any? Mr. Ignacio? My client is self-employed. He's a self-employed painter. Uh, he paints houses. Uh, so he paints uh, during the good weather. And now that lousy weather is, uh, I, th I think he goes on unemployment, but I'm not sure. Uh, or, or he just lives off his what he earned over the summer. Is that correct, Chris? Yes, that's correct. And Mr. Swenson? Um, just to go back to the fentanyl test, I believe fentanyl is a synthetic opiate, so it doesn't show up on opiate, opioid okay. test. Oh. So yeah, if yeah. I'm mistaken in that, please request the test. Okay, we, we will pay for the test if you'll take it today. That would be appropriate. Okay. And what's your client's uh, work schedule? Her work schedule, I believe she, since she's had the children full time, she has been just um, taking care of the children. She's not working. All right. Uh, so we do need to appoint a GAL, certainly. Uh, and we need to get that going right away. Uh, all this is based on my current understanding, which would mean that both parties were clean, obviously. Uh, if that is incorrect, everything changes. Uh, you know, my hope is both parties are doing considerably better than they were in August. Uh, that incident doesn't reflect well on anybody. Um, and hopefully they're behaving a lot more appropriately since. We've got two very young children. Uh, so I think pending a GAL report, I am going to go with the three days, four days, and four days, three days. Uh, 
I think that's the best way to maintain the children's contact with both parents, given the uh, age of the children. Should uh, Mr. Crocker come back positive for fentanyl, then obviously all bets are off and he's, uh, Ms. Acevedo is going to have the kids full time. Um, and can the council, can you work out the times and locations for those exchanges? I, I believe we can. Yeah, I think given what's going on now, if we've got something that the parties are agreed to, that's going to be best. You, Mr. Adagnosto, you think you can sort that out? Uh, the exchanges? Yes. Um, they are using uh, her father, although they had a, uh, they agreed to a substitute at, at the last exchange. I'm not sure who that was, but I, I think uh, he's willing to either have his father, her father, or or some agreed third party do the exchanges. All right. I will uh, leave that to council then to sort out the times and circumstances of those exchanges. Uh, please note the matter back on if the UA result is anything other than what I hope it will be. And I'll leave it to council to get the GAL order in. Your Honor, Amy Powers for the state. I believe we were also going to address child support today. Um, these kids are both receiving TANF benefits with the mother. Uh, we had filed proposed worksheets on September 22nd. We imputed both parents at minimum wage 32 hours a week as both parents were recently on the TANF grant with the kids. Uh, the father's portion of the grant ended in August, but the mother continues to be active on TANF with the kids. Mr. Adignasu? Uh, yeah, my client, um, I think he's been receiving uh, food stamps on behalf of the children. I mean, it goes to show that the children were pr primarily residing with him. Um, but uh, as far as uh, child support, I, I don't know that I've seen uh, the figures and on a split custody arrangement, there should be a residential credit. I know uh, the court indicates or the, the statute indicates not when there's some TANF uh, benefit, but being voluntarily um, you know, unemployed at this point. Uh, I, I guess we're asking for, a, 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 on a split custody arrangement, uh, either a primary residential placement to my client or at least split between the two and no uh, order of support at this time. Until we figure this out. Mr. Swenson, any position? I, we don't have a position on that currently. Ms. Powers, anything you want to add? Um, I, the statute's clear you can't do a residential credit when the kids are on TANF, but I also understand the situation if the court is more comfortable reserving on child support at this moment. I don't think I would object as long as we can preserve the opportunity to come back and get back support. I think right now that's just going to have to be a secondary issue. Uh, it can't remain that way for long, obviously. Uh, so we, we will reserve on child support. Thank you. And I apologize, Your Honor. What was the split? Three days, four days? Yeah, three days, four days, then four days, three days. And uh, you want that on in two weeks for presentation? Uh, that'd be fine, Your Honor. All right, 26 at 9 o'clock for presentation of orders. Thank you. I'll, I'll get those prepared. Uh, and council, the names for next three GAL? Amy Turnbull, Ann Height, Twyla Corey. Did you get that? Turnbull, Height, and Corey in that order. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Christopher Crocker and Cheyenne Acevedo. Here, Your Honor. I'm here as well. Amy Powers for the state of Washington. Stephen Swenson for Cheyenne Acevedo, the respondent. And Kurt, I believe you're muted. There we go. Sorry about that, Your Honor. Um, we have uh, two orders to present, a guardian ad litem order and then an order, a temporary order. Um, I believe the guardian ad litem order is agreed. Um, I can let everybody weigh in about that. 
Uh, and then on the, the temporary order, uh, we've had some difficulty setting out this schedule. And so I talked with my client late yesterday uh, and he basically explained the, the revised uh, schedule that uh, he and Ms. Acevedo uh, are following. Uh, normally, uh, you had to start on a Tuesday because we were in court on a, on a, I believe, a Tuesday. And then uh, they've agreed to switch it to a Wednesday as the, the set day. And then they, uh, they go to the 3-4 schedule off of that. And that's what the revised order uh would reflect and uh i can get that a hard copy over to you uh, this morning agreement. um my clients in agreement of the gal order we're mostly in agreement on the uh temporary order the issue is um the schedule that's laid out there isn't the schedule that um parties have agreed upon and it's not the schedule that's been followed up to this point um it sounds like uh mr Agnostic agrees with that is going to submit a proposed change do you agree that what he described is what they're doing um i don't believe wednesday is the set date i think sunday was the set date and then from sunday would be wednesday or thursday depending on if there's a three or four schedule and that's not agreed uh it was going to be a tuesday pursuant to your order and then the parties agreed to move that to a wednesday uh, that means on weekend, the the split day was ending up being either a Friday or a Saturday. One week could be Friday, the next week could be Saturday. By moving it to Wednesday, the split day becomes uh, some week it's, it's on a Saturday and some week it's on a Sunday. The, the parents would have the whole weekend. Other than that, they they would always have a part of the weekend. And and that's my understanding from your ruling. Uh, having a Wednesday consistent and then going off of a 4-3 schedule after that. Mr. Um, our main issue with that is this coming Halloween, which is a Tuesday. My client was expecting to have the children. She already purchased costumes for them. Um, and my client would prefer Sunday be the consistent day. Um, and if your honor moves it to a Sunday, she gets uh, every holiday, uh, she would get Thanksgiving and both Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and New Year's Day uh, on, on that schedule. So the other schedule uh, following kind of what, uh, from where we started, would split the holidays. And All right, I'll sign the uh, guardian um, order. Uh, it sounds to me like it would be fair to... Uh, use the uh, Wednesday, as Mr. Anagnostu suggested. Uh, Your Honor, um, in Your Honor on Halloween this year, it was supposed to be on a Tuesday, which was the schedule being followed. My client already purchased costumes for them. I understand that. I think that's what we're going to have to do. Uh, you want this on next week for presentation? Uh, that's fine, Your Honor. I, I, like I said, I have the the order. Um, I can get it over to you this morning, or we could do a presentation next week. Well, we'll put it on for presentation next week. In the meantime, Mr. Swenson, if Mr. Anagnostu gets that to you, and uh, you're good with the proposed order, uh, I would just accept, you know, an email to that effect so that we can get it signed as soon as possible. Okay. And can you, sorry, I missed, what is your ruling on Halloween and the current schedule? Uh, we'll use the Wednesday and the uh, holidays fall just according to that. I'm not going to set anything different for those holidays. Okay. This is going to give Mr. Crocker, I believe, most of the holidays, but I, I, I'll check and see what it I haven't looked at the holidays. Sounds like there'll be more split this way. If I am incorrect in that, please bring it back on. Okay. And uh, one other issue, it says in the order um, that all other orders are still in effect. I believe the restraining order, the media restraining order is no longer in effect. That's accurate. Okay. Just double check. Thank the, you. the restraining order included a provision about uh, not taking the children out of the state of Washington. 
but we can maintain that as the both of them. Um, Your Honor, my client has family in Oregon, as most of us do, and she sees them regularly. Um, I believe as long as she makes the exchanges on time, there's no flight risk. Where in Oregon? How far away? It's an hour into Oregon, hour and 15 minutes. It's not very far. All right. Washington or Oregon? Or... Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Christopher Crocker and Cheyenne Acevedo. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, we are circulating an agreed order. Uh, we were waiting for um, uh, Ms. Powers, Amy Powers, to um, uh, get that signed and back to us. And I think that should be back to me today. I should be able to get it up to you this morning. All right. Then I will just wait for that order. Thank you very much. Pretty quickly. Very good. So I see Ms. Hyde is also present. So we will strike today's hearing and we'll await any future motions that are filed. Very well. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Your Honor, I also have a quick one. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, it, on my docket, it was listed as number 10, but it might have been moved. The uh, Crocker uh, versus Acevedo. I do not see that on my docket. It was. It, at one point been, no, oh, yeah, we moved that? Oh, I'm sorry. It's the one I referenced earlier, Your Honor. Got it. Okay. Yeah, this this is one, Mr. Anastu, that uh, will need to be removed to Judge Hahn's docket. Okay. And so um, at this point, it'll just need to be, did we set an update on that? We did not. No. So that'll need to be noted for uh, any future hearings in front of Judge Hahn. All right. Can, can, can we schedule it now, Your Honor? Uh, I can move it to another docket if you want. When do you want to, if you want to do that? It was just on for a review today, as I understand. So that there's no motion pending. Correct. Perfect. And we've had emails going around between counsel and the, the guardian at Lightham. Uh, she needs a little bit of additional time to complete her report. I can't do uh, next Tuesday. Uh, so any, any other day I'm available after that. Or not next Tuesday, but the 20th. And um, you. I'm, I'm going to be out on parental leave starting the 24th, so I was hoping to have this before then. Um, I could put it on for you on the third next next Tuesday for the Judge Hahn, and she can determine. You know, I don't know if that's enough time for the uh, JL to get paperwork I'm, done. I'm this close. That close. <laughs> so if I put it on for next Tuesday morning, do you think you can get? Paperwork yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to file it uh, late tomorrow. Okay. Well, let's put it on for the 13th at 9 o'clock, then, and you can review it, determine how you want to proceed forward. Thank you. Thank okay. You. You're welcome. Eight in Crocker v. Acevedo. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, Miss Looney is in another court, so we'll be calling that a little bit later. All right, uh, going first to number. Your Honor. Yes. Sorry, Stephen Swanson. Um, I'm on number eight. I think we can just strike that because it was a review to see if the GAL report was in. Okay. Um, and it is in. Okay, hold, hold on. Let me get to where I need to get to and then I'll address that. First, Thank before you. we uh, get anywhere, are there any agreed continuances? Agreed continuances. Okay, hearing none. So I, I don't mind. I think we have, I saw the paralegal from Ms. Looney's office. Are you on here? Legal assistant or paralegal? I yes, I am, Your Honor. Okay. Are you able to get a message to Ms. Looney? Yes, I can. Okay. After I reviewed this last night, um, I agree. Uh, so, Mr. Anagnostu, any objections to just striking this? Uh, and for the record, we also have Twyla Corey. Uh, I, I saw the report was filed, and I'm not sure there's anything else to do today. Uh, no, counsel and I had an opportunity 
only this morning to talk and we agree that uh, this could be stricken and uh, further action would either be by motion or, or dock and notice or we'll go forward. Okay. Yeah, we, we intend to file a motion today or tomorrow, so. Okay. All right. So with that, uh, now I can't remember where the individual is. Uh, I'm still here, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, if you could go ahead and let Ms. Looney know that we went ahead and, and have just stricken this matter for today and uh, it was just the, the report was filed and there was nothing more to do. Okay. I will let her know. All right. Thank you. You're All welcome. Right. So that number is 233393-08 will be stricken uh, the, as stated the report was filed. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Rocker and Acevedo. Present, Your Honor. Twilu Corey, guardian ad litem. Grand Ignacio, attorney for Christopher Crocker, father. Casey Looney, on behalf of the state for child support, Your Honor. All right, counsel, go ahead. Uh, well, this is not my motion. Uh, we're the responding party. Uh, my client doesn't want changes to the parenting plan, okay. uh, the temporary parenting plan that Your Honor entered. Um, uh, it's been some time ago. Uh, it was a, a split custody arrangement, uh, four days with one parent, three with the other, and then it would reverse uh, three and four. Um, and so in a two week period, they each got seven days. Uh, this parenting plan, I believe, has been working out um, uh, very well with the children. Uh, the only thing that has changed is we received the guardian ad litem's report. Um, and uh, on the basis of the guardian ad litem report, they brought this motion. But we're asking that uh, the matter go to trial. There's a lot of information that wasn't included in the guardian ad litem report. And I can go over that. I'm not sure. Like I said, we're the responding party. And... Uh, we want this, uh, our request is that uh, Ms. Acevedo uh, have a full evaluation with input from my client uh, before uh, we proceed to trial and take testimony if court, <laughs> we did a, a declaration of a witness that um, witnessed Ms. Acevedo doing cocaine off of a toilet seat in a bar, she's a bartender, uh, that witness will come in and, and to court and testify, and the court can weigh credibility of witnesses and testimony. Um, and that Miss S. Problem. She's a, a bartender and tends to get drunk and drive drunk with the children. My client uh, indicated that in the the uh, his declaration that sometimes after working and after drinking, she would pick up the children and drive with them, and he's very concerned about that. On my client's side, he has the children. His son is now enrolled in, in school and Head Start. Uh, she's not a uh, she's not on board with uh, uh, their son going to school, getting started in in, in preschool and Head Start. Uh, and uh, their daughter um, Calliope is also going to Head Start uh, periodically, but she's um, she's young at this point, but. Uh, their son will be starting regular school next uh, by through the Head Start program, and and Miss Acevedo is just not on board with any of that. So uh, we ask that the uh, that your orders stay the same uh, until we can proceed to trial on this matter and present all the evidence to the court and the court weigh credibility of witnesses and make a determination a final determination of what's the best interest of these children at this time. And Ms. Acevedo, anything you want to add? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I received a declaration from Mr. Crocker on the 29th. I have yet uh, a chance to respond to it. I should have it filed by the end of day tomorrow. Uh, I'm fully on board with my son in school. I do take him on the days I have him, including two family nights at school. 
Uh, the teacher's there wonderful. I have no problem with him being in school. And I've already talked to the school about beginning Callie's early enrollment. Uh, the witness in question that Mr. Crocker is using testimony from has a ulterior motive for her uh, false testimony, and that's because she holds me responsible for the loss of her child as she brought me her child bruised black and blue and I reported it to CPS. That child has since been removed from her care and she holds me responsible. I do have threatening voicemails left by her uh, the day she was released from jail. She called me on my phone and threatened to go to my home and hurt my children and myself. Uh, that's most of the reason why she's lying. I definitely did not do any drugs in any bar at any point in time in the night in question, my mom was present. So uh, I would like for the court to set this over so I have a chance to file my response that I can get in by the end of day tomorrow, if that's okay with the courts. Ms. Corey? I absolutely stand by the recommendations and in my report. Um, I was most alarmed at the incident where Mr. Where Mr. Um, uh, removing Savito's home um, without her permission. Um, he put the child in the in the vehicle, uh, and I, I'm sure you've read the reports. He proceeded to uh, run. At, in a high speed, uh, at high speeds, excuse, I'm sorry, um, with, and Miss Acevedo trying to go after her son, she jumped in the back of his truck. Um, he was eventually pulled over after uh, being instructed to pull over by the police and not doing that. He eventually did and was arrested for reckless endangerment, um, obstructing an officer, and uh, something else that was eventually uh, dropped. Um, he, although he has that, I agree about his decision making. Um, and his emotional state that would lead him to do something like this. I also worry about his use of fentanyl, and he had been using fentanyl and had checked himself briefly into a detox center that same month of that incident. Um, he checked himself out uh, before that was completed, less than 48 hours, if I recall correctly, and um, against recommendations of staff. Um, he has had uh, a couple of clean um, hair follicle tests um, in, in the meantime, um, but this incident was just six months ago. Um, and I seriously fear for the children when they're in his care. Is there an announcement? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, you know, this is, is uh, uh, upsetting uh, with regards to the, the, this incident. So um, the guardian item said uh, he didn't have permission. Uh, you don't have to get permission to take your child. He's the father. There was no orders in place. She had taken the children from him. The children primarily lived with my client throughout their whole lives. Oh. They, they have residents uh, at his home. They have rooms and everything. And Miss Acevedo takes them. She wants to get them back, uh, and um, ends up, uh, you know, charged with a crime because he's trying to get uh, his children back. And and there, there's, you know, I, I understand when when parties are breaking up and these things are happening. It's high emotions, uh, and things happen that are are not uh, consistent with a person's character. Uh, my client uh, has always had the children. Uh, th that was well established that Miss Acevedo kind of would drop them off. Uh, they would be at his house for most of the time. When she visited them, she would visit them at his house where they have rooms and all their uh, 
um, their things. Uh, and then she takes them and prevents my client from seeing them because she has a boyfriend, Mr. Hess, who is a uh, registered, you know, child molester, uh, and doesn't want uh, my client around. And so my client, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, he went through the criminal process. That's all resolved. It's not. He doesn't have extensive uh, any criminal history. Uh, he has, and he will continue if the court wants to take um, uh, hair follicle tests. He's submitted those. He is clean. Uh, he has been uh, all of this. Um, of her taking the children uh, has been emotionally trying for him. Uh, and here we are. So uh, we're asking for the opportunity to go to trial and present all the evidence so the court can weigh credibility of witnesses uh, to determine the best interests of these children, which my client firmly, strongly believes is in his home uh, where they've always been. All right. Well, I certainly agree with Ms. Corey's concerns about the August incident and the decision making of both parties. Uh, at that time. Uh, it looks like we don't have a trial date. This needs to be, get put on the next trial assignment calendar. Uh, when is that? That should be next Wednesday, I assume. When is to get a trial date assigned. Uh, and I am still in the same position of being very concerned about drug use by both these parties. Uh, I am not going to make any changes today. I will put it over till next week. Uh, I assume Judge Hahn will hear it. And again, I want both of them to UA and hair tests today. And I want those results available uh, for the court and the guardian ad litem before that hearing next week uh your honor would it be okay if i took my ua and hair follicle test tomorrow as i am out of town today and i have a doctor's appointment and i'm not sure i would be able to make it to the facilities in time this today but i can definitely do it tomorrow you better figure out how to do it today okay your honor your honor and um the any state objection from either party to the proposed child support orders All right, hearing none, I'll sign those. Thank you, Your Honor. And the 12th in front of Judge Hunt. Number four on the docket, 233-393-08, Crocker and, and Acevedo. Shahan Acevedo present, Your Honor. Uh, Grant Ignacio on behalf of petitioner uh, Christopher Crocker. Twyla Corey, guardian ad litem. So one of the things that I want to address is just right before court, I was handed a declaration from Christopher Crocker uh, and a it contained within it an immediate restraining order. Uh, Ms. Acevedo, did you receive that? Yes, Your Honor, and I did receive that via email. Uh, the grounds for that is- Okay, I'm, I'm, I just wanna make sure you received it. Yes, I did, Your Honor. Okay, so Mr. I Your Honor, I, that was emailed out only yesterday. Right. Right. That's why I honestly, I have not been able to even read the ex, read it. It's an ex parte request, it looks like, and a bench copy. Uh, so I haven't looked at it. I haven't looked at the motion. So at this point, I'm not considering it. Uh, that's something that can go through the ex parte process, Mr. Anagnosti, if that's what you want to do. Uh, yes, that's what we want to do, Your Honor. Uh, but we didn't want to do that process without you being aware of it, uh, given that this hearing was set here for today. Certainly. Sure. No, I appreciate that. I, I just want to make you aware. I, I read the uh, declaration is about as far as I got. Sure. No, I appreciate that. All uh, right. 
so uh, with regards today, I want to point out to the court that we were um, on docket last week in front of uh, Commissioner Warning, uh, and Commissioner Warning indicated that he wanted both parties to do uh, drug testing again. Um, and uh, Ms. Acevedo uh, objected to that and said that, you know, anyway, Judge Warning made it absolutely clear that she needed to have drug testing last week. So we got the results of that drug testing uh, only on Friday. Uh, and um, uh, she is positive for alcohol and for uh, cannabis. Uh, and these are complaints that my client has been including in, in declarations that she has a drug and alcohol issue, a, a marijuana and, and cannabis issue. And, and then there's declarations about her doing, you know, cocaine in the bathroom and various other things. Um, and so we have repeatedly asked that she have a full evaluation uh, with input from my client. And, and, you know, an evaluator should be given this kind of information. Um and uh, get into any recommended uh, treatment. And um, uh, to date, the court hasn't uh, issued an order to that effect. They've all, what the court's ordered is several times that the parties participate in both hair uh, and UA analysis. My client has done all of those and they're all clean. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, so here we are. Uh, she objected, we think, last week uh, to, to having it because apparently she didn't have the kids and she was out partying. She's young. She's in her 20s. Uh, and my client has repeatedly pointed out since September of last year that he was the primary parent. Uh, he has always been the primary parent. She has never responded to that. Uh, there's been no response or no objection that my client wasn't the primary parent. Uh, we have this, uh, this incident where... Um, my client was uh, charged uh, criminally with reckless endangerment. What was happening was she took the children from him. Uh, she, at one point in time, what had a relationship with a uh, registered sex oh, offender. Hold on, hold on. FTR just stopped. For those that don't know, that's our recording system. It working. Yeah. All right, Mr. Anagnostu, go ahead. Uh, she uh, had entered a relationship with a, a, a registered sex offender. My client went to uh, her father's home where she's residing and, and tried to retrieve the children, and he got um, criminal charges against him. Uh, and he has paid the price for that. Um, you know, he had primary residential placement. She's in this um, negative relationship, denying him. Uh, the children. They've always resided with my client. Uh, he's paid a heavy, heavy price. The court went from him having a primary residential placement to this split arrangement. Uh, and then we get the uh, guardian ad litem report. Uh, and it doesn't take into consideration from our point of view, any of the evidence that he submitted. And now this new evidence that she's positive for alcohol and uh, marijuana use when the court requires her to do a UA and hair follicle test, you know, the same day. So uh, we're asking that the court not make any changes to the temporary order. The temporary order, you know, has cut him down to half time with the children. He had full time. Um, he's paid a heavy price, but he's um, gone through the criminal charges. He, he's, uh, you know, he's done whatever the, uh, basically the government's required of him with that regard. Uh, it was a one-time incident where he was trying to protect his children that ended up going awry. That happens in occasions. He has no other criminal history. Uh, he's repeatedly taken UA and, and drug tests. He's in counseling. He's uh, indicated the treatment that he's gotten and maintained uh, for, for his sobriety purposes. So at this point, we're asking that the parenting plan uh, or the residential arrangement stay this, as is uh, and that we, you know, set this up for a trial so the court can uh, listen to the witnesses, take this evidence, um, you know, look at the or hear witnesses testify. And in the interim, we do need her to get into a 
or have an evaluation, a full evaluation with input from my client and taking into consideration uh, the results of these uh, drug tests. So that's our request today that uh, the court leave the visitation as currently set uh, and that we, uh, the court do grant uh, his right to, um, uh, or the requirement that she have a full evaluation with input from my client. Acevedo? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I last week when Warning asked for our drug tests, I did not object. I did request that I could do it the following day because it did conflict with a medical appointment. He let me know that was not an option. And I had my UA tested and everything done by 11 a.m. I went to a testing facility immediately and got it taken care of. Uh, and the positive for alcohol from the UA, yes, I did not have the children the night before I did drink. Uh, that, not going to lie about that at all. I didn't have the children. I was at a friend's house and we were celebrating and I was completely responsible about it. And there's no drinking problem. And prior to that, I hadn't had a drink in a couple of weeks. Uh, Mr. Crocker has an extensive history with drug and alcohol, along with lying to law enforcement. And the event on the 28th, I never took the children from Mr. Crocker. I went to pick them up as agreed upon on the 13th with Mr. Crocker. When I picked them up, that's when he let me know he had relapsed for the third time. And I felt the children were in danger. So I kept them from the 13th to the 28th. And I allowed him to come spend time with them while I was working on filing paperwork and looking for an attorney. And he walked into my house without knocking and picked up our son and ran to his truck and then drove at 80 miles per hour with me in the bed and our son unbuckled in the truck until law enforcement had to pull him out at gunpoint. And when he was talking to them, he told them he was going to pull over and never did so until two officers pulled up behind him with lights and pulled him out at gunpoint. Well, I'm Mr. Crocker, Mr. Ed McNaughton okay. says that Mr. Stop. Crocker doesn't. Ms. Acevedo, stop. I don't want to retry this case. I, I get it that it's there. I get it that it's pending. I just move on from there. Uh, Mr. Crocker does have somebody who wrote a declaration for him, Dakota Myers. She is a danger to children. CPS has removed her own children from her care. Mr. Crocker and I were watching her daughter and she brought us a baby black and blue and Mr. Crocker and I reported her and got her child removed from her care because of the danger that she put the child in. And I've submitted copies of her parenting plan that the court had issued her. Uh, she, she actively abuses children and now Mr. Crocker has her in the home and has, is in a relationship with her. And as far as my relationship, I knew of Hayden Hess for two to three weeks in February and then I realized that his last name was not the last name he had told me. Initially, he told me a different last name. When I learned of his history and his sexual offenses, I no longer involved myself with him. And Mr. Hess has been in prison since March 30th of last year, and I have had zero contact. Mr. Crocker refuses to acknowledge my current partner that I have been with for 10 months. Mr. Crocker has met him. Him and I went to Crocker's house on the 4th of July to do fireworks with Sam. And Jordan has also dropped the children off to Mr. Crocker. They want to continue to accuse me of being in a relationship with a sex offender. Said sex offender has been in jail for almost a year. There was never a relationship. It was a brief amount of time where we hung out. The children were never left alone with him and barely even around him during this time. Uh, I have no problem with UAs. I will take a UA every day. Absolutely. I did initially do an entire evaluation when the court first asked for a UA and a hair follicle the first time. I went and got a UA and a full evaluation without the court asking just to make sure that if the court needed an evaluation for me, I already had it. I have no problem taking another, but I do feel that every time we try to come to court to come to resolution, Mr. Anagnostu and Mr. Crocker seem to have new matters. Now they are accusing me of burning my daughter with cigarettes on her back, but the cigarette marks in question are birthmarks she's had her entire life. And if Mr. Crocker was unaware of those big red blood birthmarks, 
from birth, how aware is he of our child's well-being in general? She's almost two. And he's just now seeing these big red marks that are not even the size of a cigarette and accusing me of burning her. I spoke with CPS. They came to my house yesterday and uh, the bruises on the children are bruises on their knees from falling down. Our children are very wild. The CPS workers seen that. Twyla has seen that. They're regular standard toddler bumps and bruises. There is no abuse with the children. And Mr. Crocker also took the children down to Vancouver outside of their normal hospital and accused me of sexually assaulting our daughter as well. I feel he's grasping at straws and trying to drag out this case in an attempt to control the entire situation with me and the children. He is a complete I, danger. I want to stop you for just a minute. I want it understood. I do not have that motion in front of me. And that's an ex party motion, which I don't know what Mr. Anagnostu did with it. I don't have it in front of me. I have not read everything in that packet. So I just want everybody to understand that, uh, that uh, as far as what we're doing here at this moment. So go ahead. I feel that Mr. Crocker and Mr. Anagnostu are grasping at straws. And every time we come to court, they seem to have new information between the abuse and uh, that they're claiming why was this abuse that he claims he's seeing now never mentioned to Twyla? Why was it never brought up before that he believed I was abusing the children? That didn't get brought up until he involved himself with Dakota Myers. And I believe she's guiding him and coaching him into what to say to assist him in getting the children. Because none of these things are factual. I'm being accused of so many awful things. And they're they're not true. And it's causing stress on myself and the children. They come to my house and they eat for two days straight like they haven't eaten. And they're drinking water like they're so dehydrated. And they, they Callie comes back and her hair is nasty and matted up and they smell and their baby blankets smell. And I'm the, the only one caring. For okay, that. stop. I don't believe that's any part of the record that I've seen. Right. All right. Your Honor, can I comment, please? Yes. Um, so Mr. Crocker has had um, two recent uh, negative hair follicle tests. However, neither one of them has included testing for fentanyl, which is his admitted drug of choice that he um, had relapsed on. Um, and one other thing is he did the physical injuries only came up on February 29th after my report was filed on February 7th. I had had heard nothing of any physical injuries until that point. Okay. Anything further? No. All right. Well, Your Honor, um, brief response that um, uh, my client is not in a relationship with Dakota Myers. Dakota Myers is my client has a roommate uh the 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 roommate is is dakota meyer's grandmother uh and so uh he's not in a relationship with her um the um if if the court wants a, a test with regards to fentanyl i guess that's a special request we can my client will submit to any testing he doesn't have a problem with that uh, the issue is last week the court uh, ordered uh, th them to do yet, uh, you know, another hair follicle and, and UAs and Miss Acevedo's is positive for marijuana and alcohol. And that's what he's been pointing out to the court repeatedly that she has a untreated drug and alcohol uh, issue. Now, she says that she's had a full evaluation. Uh, if she has, it's not part of the record here. And nor was there any request from my client to give input uh, to it. So we again asked that the court order her to have a full evaluation with input from my client. Um, and that um, uh, at this time, the residential arrangements stay the, the same um, going forward. And that we, you know, set this for trial and have witnesses come in and testify about uh, the best interests of these children. 
Let me ask you this, Mr. Anagnostu. Has your client had a full evaluation with input from Ms. Acevedo? Uh, I don't believe so. He would. Okay. He doesn't have an issue. So here's what I'm going to do. I've reviewed the files and record, including the drug test provided by Mr. Crocker, uh, and I've not seen the actual uh, Ms. Acevedo uh, at this point, uh, but I, I've heard what it was positive for. Ms. Acevedo, you should file that and do it under seal. There's a special document to put on it, so it's not open to the public. I, I filed the, that. The UA or the evaluation? I did file both of my UAs that were requested last okay. week with the courts yesterday, cover letter included. I filed it right before the cutoff time. Okay. And then Mr. Ignostu also emailed you a copy because I did email his uh, legal assistant copies of my UA when I received them. Okay. All right. Uh, and original eval should be, uh, it was submitted with my original UA. It should be with it. Okay. So here's what, so based on the information, uh, the court sees uh, uh, the similarity to what the uh, guardian Leiden said, which is there's finger pointing both directions. Uh, and that said, uh, not to uh, minimize what Ms. Corey has said, uh, but a guardian litem recommendation and report is that uh, recommendation. And so at this point, what I'm going to do is leave things as they are currently, uh, and the matter needs to get set for trial. And then the ju uh, judge or judicial officer can weigh the credibility and make a determination. Meanwhile, I want both parties to have a substance abuse evaluation with input from the other party. And for uh, Ms. Corey, you may be able to tell me this. I'm trying to recall. I think the test that I saw from Mr. Crocker was a five point test. Does that sound right? The five panel hair follicle test. Right. So yeah. they need a seven panel, correct? 17, actually, and specifically make sure that fentanyl is included in that. Um, so I'm sorry, uh, the guardian of the says 17, is that? Yeah, I spoke, actually spoke with Performance Occupational Health Services yesterday um, to kind of clarify this for myself. And they did tell me the five panel does not cover fentanyl. It's not included unless you're, you specifically ask for it. And the one that covers um, everything, including fentanyl, is a 17 panel. 17. Any idea what the cost is? I don't know. Okay. Okay. So I want each party to have the 17 panel hair follicle test. So no dyeing the hair, no cutting the hair uh, until that gets done. Well, uh, uh, and, and hold on and make sure that fentanyl is included in that test. Your Honor, both of the hair follicle tests I have submitted did in fact test for fentanyl. Uh, it's costing me about $450 when I have to take these tests. And due to Mr. Crocker taking his five panel test the first time, I had to actually cover the cost of his second test to take the proper 17 panel the second time he got his hair follicle done. And then he returned to the five panel on this third one. Okay. I, my, I, I, I don't, Miss Acevedo, I'm ruling right now. Okay. I get it. You may not want to do it but I want a current one 17 panel, each of you with fentanyl and Can the matter to get set for trial. And Mr. Crocker cover the cost of this round of tests as I have already paid for one of Mr. Crocker's and I don't have the funds. I have, I'm $1,500 in debt over the hair follicle tests Crocker and I have taken a loan and I don't have that money. I don't know why you paid for his. I don't know what was behind that. But at this point, no, I'm not. I'm asking that you each get it done. I want it done. And I want the matter set for trial. 
Okay, I believe we have a trial date date set tomorrow at one p.m. Uh, that'd be a, a trial setting date. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So they'll tell you when your trial is going to be set. Okay. So, Mr. Anagnostu, uh, are you going to prepare an order? I, I will prepare an order, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, and um, both parties, so both parties are to get a 17 panel test, and, bo and both parties are to have a substance abuse evaluation with input from the other. And the 17 needs to include fentanyl. Right. 17, including fentanyl. I keep assuming that it does, but you're right. I should put that in the order. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll go ahead and set this on for presentation in two weeks. Very good, Your Honor. And that's it for today. Thank you, Honor.